Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm sure many of you are looking at your investments, whether that be your home or your stocks, and wondering where prices are likely to go from here. In this video, I'll be sharing three things I'm seeing in the market that could indicate we're on our way towards a recession. Let's recap on what exactly a recession is. There are two broad definitions, one being the meaning behind the word, and the other being a more technical indicator. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a recession is a difficult time for the economy of the country, when there is less trade and industrial activity than usual, and more people are unemployed. If we consider the technical definition, it is generally considered to be when there's two consecutive quarters of negative real economic growth, measured by gross domestic product, or the GDP. So without further ado, let's get into the three areas which could suggest we're heading in that direction. The first, of course, is inflation and the effect this has on the cost of living. During the pandemic, billions of dollars were printed to stimulate the economy and pay for the healthcare demands of the outbreak. Now as we emerge from this, the economy finds itself overheated with surplus currency chasing after scarce production. This has been exacerbated by continued supply chain issues globally due to the war in Ukraine and further lockdowns in China, which is the world's manufacturing powerhouse. In New Zealand and the United States, Headline inflation currently sits at 6.9% and 8.3% respectively, which significantly exceeds the Fed and Reserve Bank of New Zealand's inflation targets of around 2% on average. And despite inflation running at such high levels, the average wage earner only saw their income rise by 3% over the same period. So that was a lot of numbers, let's break that down. Let's say we earn as a household $1,000 a week and spend $800 on regular expenses such as rent, groceries and utilities. The 3% increase in wages means our income would rise to $1,030 a week, while the household expenses would rise to $855 due to having an inflation rate of 6.9%. While the year prior the household was able to save $200 a week, a year later they're only able to save $175. This is what economists call negative real wage growth, or you'll often hear them use the quip of households going backwards. To boil that down, it means the average family in New Zealand in 2022 will be able to purchase less items than they could in 2021. And for the fairly typical household in the example I shared before, their disposable income has declined over 10% in just a year. Not only is this scary for the individual households, but also for the wider economy, when we consider that roughly two thirds of spending in the New Zealand economy is contributed by households, the same ones that are falling behind under the weight of inflation. What follows less spending is less growth, and should that continue to worsen, we may see ourselves descending into a situation that aligns with our definition earlier, that is two consecutive quarters of negative real economic growth. The second reason I think we're heading for a recession is due to a little known economic term called the wealth effect, which triggers when there is a substantial decline in asset prices. The wealth effect is an economic theory that suggests as the value of our assets, such as stocks, crypto and housing increase, so too does our spending. This is because we as consumers feel wealthier and more confident in our financial situation when our assets appreciate in value. However, the same is true in reverse, where consumers are quick to rein in their spending when their asset portfolios decline. Already in 2022, we are being told we've entered a bear market, with the leading US stock market indices, the S&P 500, down over 20% year to date. If we look at the crypto market, the price of Bitcoin is down over 50% from its highs posted in November 2021. And perhaps the biggest factor that is yet to really bite, particularly in the New Zealand context, is the real estate market. In Auckland, the median sales price declined 3% in April alone, with many market commentators suggesting the worst is yet to come. Since 2004, ANZ and Roy Morgan have partnered to survey New Zealand households on a range of questions related to their financial position and outlook of the future. The economic term for this is consumer confidence, and they perform this evaluation monthly. In March this year, the survey revealed the lowest consumer confidence levels on record, even lower than during the pandemic and during the GFC, which is crazy. Households are worried about their financial outlook, and I believe we'll see the impact of this over the coming months, particularly as the middle class is squeezed due to inflation. And the third reason I'm concerned, and that is rising interest rates. Most New Zealand households have a mortgage on their primary residence, and for many, this is one of their highest expenses. If we look back just the year, Retail mortgage rates were somewhere between 2 and 3%. However, since then we've observed rates nearly doubling across most loan terms. It is said that between 60 and 70% of New Zealand's loan book will have their interest rates reset in 2022, which will mean that many households will see their mortgage costs soar. As I mentioned, with mortgage costs being one of the largest expenses, 
a rise in mortgage costs is likely to reduce the disposable income in New Zealand households' pockets, meaning they have less money to spend on all other goods. Add to this the impact of our first point, inflation, and the fact that the cost of all those other goods is also rising faster than incomes. The middle class is going to be squeezed from both ends in 2022, which is a recipe for disaster for the economy and its growth. So let's look at a fictional case using our example from earlier. A household earning $1,000 a week, with a $400,000 mortgage fixed for a year at 2.09%, and a further household expenses of $500 a week. Let's look at how they'd be affected using the real numbers currently in the market. As we discussed earlier, incomes over the past year have risen 3% and inflation has pushed the cost of goods up 6.9%. We now have an income of $1,030 a week and expenses of $534.50, with the one year interest rate now sitting at 4.55% and likely to rise even higher over the coming months the mortgage costs have risen from $345 a week to $470. These are real numbers I'm using here and are a stark reality for so many households right now that I don't think is being published. It's only a matter of time, in my opinion, before we start seeing these stories come to light. So that covers a few concerns in my mind right now. The fact we also have a reserve bank trying to stop inflation by increasing rates, yet a government that continues to implement an expansionary fiscal policy, shows that we're heading into very uncertain times and even our key players in solving this are at odds with one another. I hope you enjoyed this video, it's slightly different from my usual topics but certainly something that's playing on my mind. I hope it encourages you to come to your own conclusions and think more about what these factors could mean for you and your household. As always, please make sure to subscribe down below to see more content just like this in the investing and personal finance space. Also feel free to leave a comment down below if you had any thoughts or if there are other points that I may have missed. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.